I love to just expose myself to new places, new people, new worlds, new ideas. I'll take a walk in a place that I've never been to before. And I feel like if I just go outside and listen and open myself, I'll be inspired by everything that's happening around me. I'm constantly thankful. It is unconventional to be able to be able to travel to so many different places. And the fact that I got to live with an indigenous community for a year, the fact that I got to protest with them for three months and we won a case from the EPA. I'm very fortunate that my life has been such an adventure and I've been able to grow in so many of these different contexts. But at the same time, my life hasn't been without challenges. I've been in scenarios where I was made to feel like I didn't belong because of my gender and because of the color of my skin. I've been told before by a professor that I'm not just a pretty face and that to prove I'm not just a pretty face, I should stay overtime and clean up the rest of the lab. I've also had to live with the consequences of fear in terms of not knowing what to do. Uh, you know, should I speak up? Should I not speak up? Should I put my career on the line? Especially when you're young, it's so hard to kind of battle with a lot of these questions. For me to go through that experience, I did mature and I did grow and learn how to deal with these kinds of disrespectful attitudes from other people. And it was through that process that I ultimately became stronger in the face of adversity. Something that's been important and valuable for me is having these mentors who care about who I am as a person um, and continue to support me and my personal growth, regardless of what career choice I make or what academic discipline I'd like to go into. Uh, growing up, I often felt a lot of pressure because, you know, I am, quote unquote, a successful woman in STEM in terms of, um, you know, I've been able to publish papers and make certain scientific advancements on things. Um, and so over the years, that term woman in STEM has been a really complicated term for me because sometimes it's a term that I'm proud of. It's like, you know, I made it here and I have a right to be here. But other times I feel like it can be limiting because sometimes I see myself as, you know, going more into the arts or humanities. And what about just encouraging people to pursue their passions? If you are a woman who's in a STEM field right now, you know, there, there might be a point where you sometimes feel like you have a strange relationship with this phase because you're here just for the sake of quote unquote inclusion. But, you know, are there really systems in place to make sure that your voice is heard and that your ideas are being registered? And so I think that's something that I, I hope to sort of shed light on because I know when we sometimes when we talk about this phrase woman in, in STEM, it's done in a very an overtly positive light, but I think it's a very nuanced term. For all of us, uh, you know, part of the journey of being human is this process of questioning. You know, I think sometimes we're told this myth of when, when you're an adult, you'll just know everything, you know, everything's going to be smooth and everything has a black and white answer. And I think we can all say that, you know, that's not true. Going off this this realization that life is always a journey and, you know, all of us are just sort of always still figuring it out in some way or another. I think it's always really powerful to just reflect back on, you know, what did I learn in the past six months? How did, how did I change in the past six months or the past year or the past five years? Um, and it's kind of only when we start to bring up this measuring stick to our, our to ourselves and our personal experiences that, you know, we can start to, to understand and track growth.